Hi there, my name is Dr. Abai and I'm here at Glidewell Laboratories and I'd like to share yet another case with you. This one was uh, a lot more challenging than the cases that I've been sharing recently. It's a patient that presented with a history of periodontal disease and bone loss, a lot of structural loss uh, for the support for his teeth, as you can see in the pictures. And the patient is a heavy smoker and uh, we've had the conversation with him that he needs to uh, really stop smoking in order to uh, receive implants and be able to undergo uh, the implant surgery for his uh, long-term outcome, not just for the implants, but just uh, for his overall health as well. So uh, what we started out with uh, with this patient was taking him through our protocol of diagnosis and treatment planning, and his initial visit uh, consisted of extraoral pictures, intraoral pictures, a comprehensive exam, uh, obviously radiographs, and uh, what I wanted to do with this case was try to uh, present an overall digital treatment protocol where we don't fabricate any diagnostic casts or uh, even working or final casts in order to fabricate this patient temporary. And what I want to focus on in this video is treatment of his maxillary arch in terms of extraction and implant placement and also guided surgery. So as you can see, uh, progressive uh, bone loss, along with the help of uh, a comb beam CT scan and a picture that we have here, I was able to diagnose the patient in terms of his needs and where his bone quality and quantity are and uh, what we can do with implant therapy. So the initial visit, we collected a lot of information and part of uh, what we do in terms of that uh, data collection is a full mouth scan, uh, intraoral scan, uh, where we capture all the heart tissue. Uh, we're able to merge that information with the comb beam CT scan, and that way we can fabricate our surgical guide in order for the patient to, re to receive implants. This case is going to be a extraction of all the teeth in the maxillary arch, along with placement of immediate implants and immediate loading. Question is, are clinicians comfortable with uh, this type of procedure and, and a fully digital workflow? And I think if not now, then definitely in the near future, this is a direction that dentistry is going to be going. So once we have all the information in terms of the full arch scan, especially in the maxilla, we can export the data into a third party CAD CAM software where we can extract the teeth. And that's what you see my partner, Zach Dalmau, uh, doing here. So uh, what he does is he will upload all the data and under the CAD CAM software can highlight the areas of the teeth that we want to extract. And one by one, we're able to extract these teeth. So uh, once we have the teeth that are extracted, and in this approach, we're selectively e extracting the teeth because we want to do guided surgery, and we want at least a minim minimum of three teeth to hold our guide into place. So we've ex extracted all the teeth but three. Uh, we've left one in the front, two in the back, in order for us to create a tripod stability effect and be able to see our surgical guide. So there we have the maxillary arch and we're keeping his vertical dimension the same and if you're thinking about incisal length, we're keeping his incisal length the same as well. So once we have the extracted model and you can, see, you can appreciate that here on the lower right hand side in the box, um, you can merge this information with the comb beam CT data, which is on the lower left on the screen. And under treatment planning software, there are several ones out there. You can select uh, points that correlate between the comb beam CT scan and the intraoral scan. And the software, for the most part, will automatically put these two scans together. And this will allow us to start out with a digital wax up of this case. So the first step is to merge the two data types the second step is to create a digital wax up. And because we already have the length of the teeth that we want, uh, we're not going to be changing that. And we're keeping this vertical dimension the same as well. So under this treatment planning software, we're able to import from a library of teeth the exact wax up that we want in order to fabricate our temporary for this patient. So as you can see here, the wax up is complete. We can set and adjust the plane of occlusion and we can compare it to where the bone and the soft tissue are on his comb beam CT data and also his intraoral data, uh, scan data. Also, we can go ahead and place the implants at the same time under the same software. So we've started out with a maxillary arch that needs teeth to be extracted. We have digitally extracted 
uh, several teeth. We've left a few of them in place to help seed our guide. And we've also designed exactly where we want our implants to go and we're able to fabricate digitally our surgical guide. And this information then can be sent to two different places. Uh, for the surgical guide fabrication, the information is sent to a stereolithography printer and the surgical guide is printed that way, which you, which you can see here. For the fabrication of the temporaries, we can have the file sent to a CAD CAM milling machine and based on the exact location of our implants, the temporary can be milled and returned. And in the second appointment, as you see here, we can go through the procedure. So when the patient comes back, I start out with the selective extraction of the teeth that we want to remove in order to have our predetermined surgical guide sit on the remainder of the teeth. So one by one, I elevate. Obviously, you want to take care to not break the buccal plate in this situation and preserve as much bone as possible because your surgical treatment plan is based on the available bone as is and, and uh, there not being any changes to the underlying structure. So once the extractions are complete and the three teeth remain, we can go ahead and see our surgical guide on the teeth and there are windows that are built into the surgical guide that will help us confirm that the surgical guide is fully seated on top of the teeth. The reason why I went with a tooth-borne surgical guide in, in this situation is for the stability of the guide. Obviously, if you extract all the teeth and you do a tissue-supported guide, the tissue might not support the guide to the same level as the natural teeth would. So I start out with my osteotomies once the surgical guide is in place and I'm able to widen my osteotomy using a surgical drilling kit. And once I've created my osteotomy, I can go ahead and place my implants through the guide to the exact location that was predicted during our digital treatment planning. So all the implants are in place, and what I'm doing now is I'm placing just regular healing abutments to preserve the soft tissue and uh, not have a collapse on top of my implant platforms. And one of the teeth on the maxillary left, I had to do a sinus lift with the Summers approach, the Crestle approach, and place the implant for this situation. So this implant actually was not placed utilizing uh, the guide. The initial osteotomy was, and the final placement of the implant was placed without the uh, use of the guide. So once all the implants are in place, I'll go ahead and extract the remainder of the teeth. And once that's completed, I can go ahead and retrofit the CAD CAM mill temporary on top of the implant. So as you can appreciate here, we have the radiographs of all the implants in place. The next step is to change the platform of my implants, uh, which are at the bone level, to the tissue level restorative platform. So what I did was I attached multi-unit abutments on top of my implants and that pretty much levels the playing field in terms of restorative platform. And the next step would be to place my temporary cylinders or temporary abutments on top of my multi-unit abutments. Now these look extremely long, obviously. What I have to do is I have to fit my temporary on top of these abutments. And what I'll do in the lab is once uh, my temporary is, is seated and I know that I can, I can place it on top of these abutments, I can take these out of the mouth go into the laboratory and shorten them to the proper height so they're not sticking all the way through my temporary. So one by one, I'll go ahead and remove the ex excess material and the excess length. And then I can also mark the inside of my temporary and see where it is hitting these temporary abutments. And I can widen those areas, which then I will go back into the mouth and I'll pick up those temporary abutments utilizing a flowable temporary material. I've used flowable composite in the past, or you can use a uh, flowable bisacrylic uh, material that you can light cure. So I give myself plenty of relief because I want to make sure that the temporary can be seated all the way down. And I also have added a wing on the palate 
to ensure that my plane of occlusion is going to be kept consistent and the vertical dimension is also going to be kept consistent. And that palatal, palatal wing is going to be removed once I pick up all the uh, temporary abutments. So for the most part, the temporary abutments have been connected in the mouth and the inter-implant relationship is going to be really important here because you want to be able to passively seat this on top of the implants. And once you're sure of uh, the location of, of the pickup and of the implants, what I did was I added to the voids on the uh, tissue surface. And then I can go ahead and trim away all the excess that I don't need. And at the end, what you're left with is a fixed temporary that's seated on top of the immediate implants. So then I can go back into the mouth and seat the full arch temporary. And I want to make sure that my occlusion is balanced. So what I do is uh, once I deliver the full arch maxillary temporary restoration, I'll go back and I'll check the occlusion. And for the most part, uh, it takes me just as long to check the occlusion as it does for any of the other procedures in terms of placing the implants or picking up the temporary. So the occlusion in this situation is going to be extremely important. What I have done is place Teflon on top of my screw access holes and I've also placed a packable composite. And once my assistant cures everything, I'll go ahead and make some fine adjustments to the aesthetics if I need to. And I will also go back and check the occlusion. And after the occlusion is checked, everything is polished, and the patient is ready to undergo a period of healing. Obviously, careful instructions are given to the patient, and what we have in the situation are some positive results in terms of immediate loading of the implants. You have a radiographs of the implants with the multi-unit abutments and the temporary abutments on top of the implants. And at the one month post-op recall, uh, yes, the patient has some staining on the temporaries, but overall, temporaries are integ integrating uh, fairly well into his oral structure. So this case has yet to be completed, so please stay tuned for part B uh, of this case presentation in the near future. And uh, thank you for joining me uh, in this case presentation.